My guest today is Norfolk-based pet portrait artist, Carl Ball. I'm really excited to show you his work. His portraits are bursting with life. He really masters the effects of light on animal fur uh, with broad painterly brushstrokes. Carl has a fascinating mastery in painting animals, effortlessly captures the loving soul and warmth in pets' eyes. I'm sure his portraits are treasured by families forever. And I'm really excited to have, have you here, Carl. Uh, thanks for coming on the stream, and it's great to finally meet you. Hello, thank you for having me. And that introduction was great. Thanks. <laughs> no, no, well deserved, Carl. Really well deserved. I, I'm, I'm really interested. How did it all start? How did you get into painting? Um, so it was probably the least conventional way possible, really. I didn't actually study art at university or anything like that. I was kind of on that route, but I ended up. I just kind of had ten years where I did various different jobs instead and I always uh, meant to get back into painting so um, I bought myself some oils and I'd kind of pick them up maybe for a few weeks at a time here and there and I never really got anywhere with them I think I started for some reason I decided I would start with um, human portraits I've seen some of your portraits they no they're great Carl they're great <laughs> but Start with human portraits is probably not the best idea, really, because, yeah, they're very difficult. And um, I did a few and eventually someone asked me if I could paint their pet. It was actually someone my dad worked with, one of his work colleagues. And um, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll give it a go. It's, it's the first time I've ever painted an animal and I did it and she loved it. She wrote me a letter saying how much she loved it and it made her cry and things. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. And I, I, think I, I kind of gave it to her as a gift and she sent me more than enough money for it as well. So, yeah, and that kind of made me think, yeah, there's something in this. I should. I'm so glad you had gone into this because, as I said, you know, your portraits like that. That's there's something about your, your portraits. They really capture capture the soul. Yeah. I mean, she must have been over the moon. You were featured in the paper for doing your NHS um, portraits for heroes. I just. Congrats, that was a really, really great thing to do and credit where it's due for the for our NHS heroes, right? I mean... Yeah, thank you, yeah. So going full-time, I want to ask you, how did you make that leap to full-time? So I think that's something we really, a lot of people struggle with. So I, ha I had some savings and um, I went travelling for a bit and I, I was very unsure as to what I was going to, going to do when I came back home. And I think because I was uh, in a different frame of mind where I was willing to take risks, I just thought I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to come home. I'm going to just Brilliant. paint, paint, paint for uh, maybe I'll give myself a year. If I don't make any money, then I'll give up. But um, <laughs> as it turned out, I've, I've pretty much had commissions. Uh, like it hasn't always been full time. There's, there's definitely been some um, part time periods, but you know that's those of um, I've had more time to practice during those and build up my portfolio and things like that. So yeah, it was just taking the plunge really. So it really was a leap of faith and yeah. you had a little bit of you know security there, but you just yeah. went for it. That's amazing. Yeah, and I kind of, I think my prices are very reasonable, but it just kind of allows me to get the experience, but also support myself while I do it. And yeah, the plan is just to, um, as I get more experience, as I get busier, uh, I can charge more obviously. And the hard work will pay off, I hope. <laughs> I think it is already, definitely. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I was surprised um, during lockdown. Uh, at first, it, it went very quiet. But um, after the first couple of months, um, it really got busy again. And I was, yeah, it shocked me that people were still buying pet portraits. I mean, people are getting more pets, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Or they're at home with their pets all the time. And I think, oh. Yeah. Oh, I remember you. <laughs> What I love about your story, Carl, is that you're, you know, you didn't go to art uni, you know, you had the interest, but it was like in the back of your mind. And then yeah. you thought, let's go for it. And, and uh, that's, that's really, that's awesome. You're uh, you know, a great example, but it is possible, right? And you don't, mm. you don't necessarily need to be in the galleries and, you know, you can, you can make it work. Yeah, I think social media just helps so much with that, really. Like, I, I don't even have any website yet or any or business cards or anything yet. <laughs> Literally just Instagram and Facebook. That's mad. Like, there are so many things you can do on groups, and it's just amazing what, how, how you can get your work out there, really. 
I do think people worry too much about, you know, getting a business card, getting a website, mm. you know, first of all, do have the product, you know, have the, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And, and the, the work should follow you. Right. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I want to talk about your working methods, your site, your kind of process. Mm. Yeah. I know you start with a toned canvas sketch and then sort of work dark to light. Is that? Yeah. I uh, more or less always go dark to light. Yeah. So I always start with the drawing. I always like to make sure I've got that very accurate before I start painting. Although I do tone the canvas first. I usually tone the canvas and actually leave it to dry and then I draw onto that. Cool. And what are you toning the canvas with? Just, uh, is it acrylic or are you going in with the oils? Uh, I go, I just go with turpentine and a little bit of black. Leave that for like a day or? Uh, yeah, usually a day, about 24 hours. Sometimes I do it the night before even, and it's usually fine. And when you say you sketch, is there anything you're looking in, looking for in particular, like information that you're planning to give yourself, your future self? Um, I would, well, I usually start with like the basic shapes and um, gradually try to refine those. And um, I do tend to do a little bit of just like shading of the shadows. I would sometimes sketch in like some of the planes as well. like I, darker areas yeah what about likeness i guess with with pets it's a little bit easier than than a, than a, a face you know a, a, a person yeah it, it does um, i always make sure i get the features uh, as accurate as i can definitely like I, I like to see the likeness in the sketch before i start painting so you start with the darks and sort of mm -hmm. go from there yeah, yeah and i also start um, um quite thin with the paints as well what paints do you use carl well, um, I use uh, quite a few different brands, actually, but I tend to go for the ones that are more fluid and um, kind of the wetter ones. So, yeah, Michael Harding, um, M. Graham. I haven't had the chance to experiment with them more fluid, you know, the, the, the newer type brands that are popping up. I imagine that that's, you're not having to put so much medium to make it workable. You just go straight from, yeah. the, straight from the mix. Yeah, I, I don't use a lot of medium, really. I just a little bit of thinner in the um, early stages and uh, maybe a little linseed oil as well but most of it is just paint from the tube what about fur because you, you have such a great simplification of the fur with these big broad brush strokes so i, I don't tend to try and um, paint individual strands of fur in it's, it's more I, I just feel like a brush mm. kind of lends itself to fur naturally anyway like, yeah, if that makes sense you know so maybe one brush stroke is enough to kind of um, represent Lastly, I wanted to ask you about the eyes because your eyes are very, very great. Uh, uh, like they, they capture the light coming in and bouncing off. So is there, is there any particular process for the eyes? Uh, still dark to light. It's, um, I usually leave them till the end. It's kind of like a reward for all of, all of the hard work because like I always find the eyes more enjoyable, especially as features. I really hate painting noses and mouths, but I enjoy the eyes a lot. And, um, I think that the eyes have like a mesmerizing effect, don't they? And if you, if you, if you put to paint them too early, you might uh, have been lazy in other areas and you think, oh, well, the eyes are captivating now. Mm -hmm. That's it, yeah. I try not to use too many different colors like, um, for the, um, what's it called? The, the color part of the eyes, the, the iris. iris? Yeah, so I, I try and limit that maybe to just like, um, maybe three tones. If not, it seems to just become too complex. But um, yeah, I start with um, dark around the edge. But that's a—I mean, I would say that's kind of like a theme. You've got a lot of simplification coming up, going on here. So you, you know, instead of getting drawn into that little, the little fur and the little bits of detail, you're stepping back. You know, squinting perhaps. Are you squinting? Um, I maybe a little bit. Um, I'm not. Much of a squinter. Not but, much of a squinter. Uh, maybe that's something I could do more. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just about getting the highlights in the eyes right as well. Um, what about varnishing and uh, finishing the painting off? Um, yeah, I do varnish. Yeah, um, I, I use this stuff, Yamaha gloss. Gloss. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, apparently you only need to wait uh, sort of two to three weeks or something before you varnish. So you can much easier, you know, send them yeah, off. Yeah, that's made my life a lot easier. I usually give it a month to be safe, but um, yeah, I just give it a coat or two of that, really. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, Carl, for showing us your, you know, how, how you're, you're working through a painting. Oh, I wanted to ask specifically on whiskers. Is there any kind of um, 
are you scraping away from the canvas? Are you using a certain type of brush? What, um, what are you I doing just there? use a very fine brush and I try to keep them fairly random as well. And um, I try to focus on like the shine rather than the actual whisker. Does that make sense? And I try to make the very quick, quick kind of jagged strokes rather than like flowing sometimes as well. And I sometimes put them just in midair as well, if you probably notice. Right, yeah, you can see in this one, it's got, you've got just a few little. And it's sometimes a case of just like dragging the color that is on your brush from the previous whisker back through again, rather than applying paint. I think it's still something I'm experimenting with, but. <laughs> You've got a great use of um, uh, the dark on the light background, the light on the dark background. You know, the whiskers yeah. aren't always white, right? You know, they're gonna no, be. No, no, you get black ones. And I think the same with, with fur. Uh, you know, you've got a quite a light colored uh, cat or something or, or dog, and it's still gonna have a very, distinct shadow side and shadow planes. And, and I think you yeah. capture that really well. And we have a little bit of a habit of working too quickly. Uh, last week with a dinosaur, uh, trying to get that done in, in 30 minutes. So I was, I was curious, how long do these portraits take you normally? Uh, I mean, um, it's, well, they take me all day, but there is a lot of um, procrastinating and pacing and checking my phone and walking up and down and, you know, having breaks coming back to it during that. So it's hard sure. to say, put it down to an exact time. I guess that pacing and that helps you just take a, take a break you take a visual yeah, break yeah, and come beautiful. back. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Sometimes I take it a bit too far, but it, it's necessary. <laughs> part of Go the down the beach. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I live right next to the beach. So I have to oh, do that. Cool. Clear my head if, if I'm getting stressed out. I can't decide what's wrong with a piece. I'll just go for a walk and come back. And sometimes I see it when I return home. Yeah. Something we ask all our guests, Carl, is what's your favourite book, uh, art book, painting book? Have you got any any favourites? I think this is an area where I struggle because I never really studied art. Uh, I, I basically learned more or less everything from YouTube and just trial and error. Well, a YouTube channel, sure. YouTube's yeah. brilliant. <laughs> I mean, I can give you one YouTuber I really I used to love watching, um, Ben Lustenauer. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Really good guy. Really good. Like, it's just incredible. And the amount of content he has on there for free is amazing as well. Like, this valuable information that he's just putting out there. I think YouTube played a huge part in me learning to paint. Like I say, other than that, it was mostly trial and error. It's a different, it's becoming a different world. I mean, I buy a lot of art books and, you know, read a couple of pages every week but you you could spend hours on youtube like that you know and, and and get exactly what you're looking for i probably need some art books so if there are any you would recommend to me i will buy them and read them <laughs> yeah there's definitely some that are yeah one we looked at last week the color and light uh, by james gurney so we're about to paint our own pet portraits now um inspired by your work so do you have any do you have any advice for our viewers for this next couple of hours? I'd say try to look for like colors that you wouldn't necessarily expect to see. Uh, yeah, always like uh, your greens and your purples and uh, don't just paint a brown dog brown. Uh, maybe a little squinting and um, uh, I do exaggerate them as well sometimes. Like if I see, uh, for example, if I see something that looks a bit like a brown that looks a bit more green, I, I might throw some more green into my mix than is actually there, just because I think it will add more harmony to the piece. But in terms of um, advice, I would always say, always say you, I've, I found it really helpful to choose reference photos that had a lot of shadows. Definitely, uh, yeah, give yourself like that, the best starting position you can, mm. right? Yeah, and, 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 get the drawing, and get the drawing right before you start as well. Don't start painting if you're not happy with the drawing. Thanks, Carl. Well, we're gonna give it our best shot. Make, guys, make sure you go and follow Carl on Instagram and Facebook at Portrait Painter Carl. Great feed. I love seeing your work. And yeah, is there anything else you'd like to say or you'd like me to ask you, Carl? Um, going back to advice, one thing that also really helped me is um, I try to wait as long as possible before I use any whites at all. Because um, it can just desaturate your mixes too much. Right, right. So even putting uh, it into the mix. 
yeah, I, I, I don't even put white on my palette anymore. I wait until I'm kind of two thirds of the way through and then I allow myself to have that white there. So I do as much as I can without using white. Wow, that's a and really cool. Use colors like yellow and uh, maybe a pale green. So. And you, so you're just keeping a bit more uh, saturation, a bit more chroma. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I noticed you used a, it looks like a toned palette as well, sort of match the toned canvas. I mean, I mean it definitely helps, but I, I, it's just kind of toned through time, really. It used to be this color, and now oh, cool. it's this. So it, it's just like a build-up of paint over months. I always clean it with, uh, I choose paper towels to rub it off. And nice. So you've got that nice room. neutral surface. Yeah, yeah, it's a neutral surface, yeah. One, one thing I would say that um, I think I still struggle with now, in terms of value and color, um, you want to make sure you keep, because you're working from dark, dark, dark to light, um, as you add more mid-tones in, your darks are going to, they'll start to look different to when you place them. So you always need to be checking back and adjusting what you've done previously. Their relative darkness yeah, will change or... Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, I often put my darks in too dark and then the contrast is too high, so I need to go back and lighten them. But that's, I guess that's a good mistake to have. That's a good problem to have right because you can mm -hmm. quite easily lighten and you can't yeah, as definitely. easily darken right carl thank you so much and i know you live in uh, norfolk just a couple of yeah. hours away we'll have to get together and do some painting or... yeah i'd be up for that um <laughs> definitely do some planner yeah be really, really good to, to to meet you in person i've just, I've just started um plan air for well the first time i did it was a few months ago and i think i've tried about three times and it is very challenging, so I would like to try it with somebody so I can kind of have a look at what they're doing as well. I was painting uh, yesterday, did this viaduct, uh, uh -huh. and we just got we just got killed by the heat. It was too much. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I think we had the hottest day. Uh, yeah, yeah ago, right. didn't we? Thanks so much for uh, coming on the stream, Carl. Brilliant to have you on, and thanks for sharing your work with us too. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. That's right. It's time for a jigsaw club.